Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again on Itamar. Today is Thursday, not Friday. I apologize for not um, giving a lesson last week. I was away in a beautiful place with my family called Zechron Yaakov for the Shabbat, for the weekend, and it was very, very special. I recommend you all visit Zechron Yaakov. It's a beautiful town. Um, I'd like to get right down to my Torah lesson. This week I would like to first dedicate it to this lesson to a woman named Jacqueline, or Jackie. Um, she's a um, a mother of one of my very, very special friends, this guy named Aaron, who came a long way. He came all the way from America, and he returned to the land of Israel. And he got married recently. A very, very special um, young man. And his mother, a very wonderful family, and she's an artist, a quite an amazing artist. She makes very special artwork. And she says she follows our Torahs very, very... Um, how do you say, very, you know, in Hebrew we say ikvi. In English, I guess it means, I'm a consistent, consistently. And um, so I promised her when I met her that I will dedicate a lesson in her honor. And of course, I wanted a surprise and not tell her which one it's going to be. So, <laughs> But anyway, this is the lesson. They're very, very special family. Again, as I mentioned, um, they recently visited Itamar in honor of our son's wedding. She came here with the whole family and we met the family. And... Um, Wow, it was really, really special people. So, Jacqueline, if you're listening to this lesson, I hope you are. This is in your honor. Um, I'd like to really, this, this week, focus. There are a lot of things to focus on. First of all, of course, we all know it, it, we are blessing over the, um, over the budding of the trees, the blossoming, the month of Nisan. We're entering, we just entered the month of Nisan, the month of redemption of Am Yisrael from Egypt. It's Pesach is coming around. It's such a very special time of hitchachut, of renewal. There's so much to really talk about. And of course, we are beginning a new book today. We're beginning um, the book, this Shabbat, we're going to be reading the book of Leviticus. As we say in Hebrew, Sefer Vayikra, which is called <coughs> Torah Kohanim. It's called the Torah of the Kohanim, of the priests. Because it's interesting when you think about it, that most of the book is really focused and directed to the purpose of, the function of the priesthood in Am Yisrael. Um, I read a beautiful um, article. He has a, 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 writ, a book called Talei. Well, I'll show you right now in front of me. I can show you in Hebrew here. There we go. It's called, and he might have that way he got there, Talei Chaim, written by Harav Chaim Kohen Shlita, the famous Chalban. The Chalban in Hebrew refers to a milkman, someone who, he has a, um, a dairy farm, well, not a dairy farm, a dairy factory, that he produces milk products for all over Israel. And an amazing, you know, amazing individual, great righteous man that, that was hiding himself for many, many years. And as we know, when, there are 36 righteous tzaddikim in the world. And he's definitely one of, he's probably the head, they say he's the head of the 36 righteous, um, righteous um, Kabbalists, righteous um, teachers of Israel. And there's no doubt he's a giant, a great man. And what I, every time I go and listen to a, a Torah class of his, the most the powerful thing, the message that I get being in his presence is how much he lives the Torah. Torah is, for him is not just reading a book. A lot of people study Torah like they're studying anything else. You know, okay, it's wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom in Torah, they call it. So they'll just study Torah like any other, you know, any other um, thing, like they're studying science or mathematics. Here is another wisdom. But, um, no, Torah is not, I don't, of course Torah is wisdom, of course there's so much wisdom in Torah, <coughs> but we have to realize that Torah is life, Torah is Chaim life, is the name of the rabbi, the Chalban, is Rav Chaim, a Kohen, he himself is a Kohen, and when you see him teaching Torah, you see that it's not just the wisdom, it's Torah comes to life, he really lives the Torah. As he teaches, he starts to cry, just, to, just, just emotional about it. When he gives a, um, a reproof of something that we have to do, a person to rectify himself, immediately you see tears pouring out of his eyes, just lives every word of Torah that he says. And it's a lesson for all, for every one of us, that we have to take the Torah and apply the Torah and let it become really part of us. Because how many days and months and years go by in our lives that we remain the same people that we were years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, <laughs> Whatever people remain the same individuals, and, and, and of course, God requires for us to make a change. And the question we must ask ourselves, 
when are we really going to make an, a, a real profound change in our lives and become different individuals? For the better, of course, for the better sense, to improve ourselves, to really make a change. Now, inner self, I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, about that, you know, after the sin of the Kalkan, the people, the Jewish people sin of the golden calf after seeing so much, because a change really wasn't made within their hearts. They knew it, they under, maybe understood it, they've seen it, they saw it in a much, in an, intellect, in an intellectual um, sense, but they did not apply that change to their inner selves, and as long as we don't apply it and bring it down to our hearts, then we'll remain the same as we were years ago. There won't be no difference, you know. The minute we get exposed to a certain environment, we can fall down again. And we have to really work on ourselves and improve ourselves and make a real, real change in our lives that we will act differently. And that's what I see, this amazing rabbi, one of the 36 righteous, um, I, special tzaddikim, as we say, Lamed Vav tzaddikim in the world. It's just amazing. It's such a great individual, and it's a, it's a blessing to be able to go to his class. It's a very long class. As a matter of fact, he's once a week on Tuesday nights in Ramat Gan, and it usually lasts for three hours straight, and it's a very, very long, intense class, and very, very, um, every, every message, every word is so powerful, and of course, it's very... It's not easy to follow. There are literally hundreds of people gathering around to listen to him. But um, I recommend everyone to have that experience in Israel to go and listen to the rabbi. And this lesson, of course, um, I mentioned before, I read a um, beautiful part of his book that he wrote on this week's portion. I'd like to bring down some of those teachings as well. Um, first, I'd like to begin by reading the opening verse of this week's portion as it begins like this. Vayikra el Moshe, and God calls out to Moshe Rabbeinu, Vayitaber Hashem Elam, and God speaks to him, Me'oel Mo'ed Le'mor, from the, Oel Mo'ed from the tent, which is from the Mishkan, the tabernacle, saying, Okay, Daber el Bnei Yisrael, speak to the children of Israel, Vayamarta, and you will say to them, Okay, as we all know, and I'm going to finish this verse, Adam, when a person, Ki Yakiv Mekem Korbam, when he brings a, Sacrifice Lashem to God, Mina Behima, Mina Bakao, Mina Tzon, Takrivet Kobanachim. He goes right in to say what animals are the animals which are kosher for sacrifice. This whole introduction is something that requires a lot of um, a lot of iyun, a lot of deep um, look, insight and looking into. Number one is this whole concept of understanding what sacrifice is all about. Of course, we spoke about this in the past, and that's really not going to be the focus on this lesson. Number two, um, we see how God calls out to Moshe Rabbeinu from the Mishkan. Which means that the Mishkan itself, we have to really look deep into that again, it, it must be a center of communication. And that's, of course, we know what it is. The fact that God calls Moshe Rabbeinu from the Mishkan, from the Tabernacle, which, of course, is the temporary structure until we build our temple. So eventually it's going to be the temple that is a source of communication to Hashem. If you look around today, and one of the questions that I always ask myself is that, what is going on in, our, in this generation? I'm told you, come, you come home, and here you see a daughter on Facebook, you know, your children. Uh, one, one particular daughter, my youngest one, who really loves Facebook, and she's always there typing away for me. It's constant communication with her friends. They want to talk to this one, talk to that one, or it's text messaging, it's all the whole thing of the um, cell phones, the cellular boom in the world now. There's a, there's a huge um, desire amongst humanity today. And all This goes across every nation, you know, of communication. People want to communicate with one another, trying to find a way of making themselves communicate with others. This is not, as we say, a chance event. What is, stands behind this, this desire of communication with one another? And I thought of um, a deep explanation behind this is that communication really is a way of connection, right? Between one people connect with one another. But this really comes from an inner desire of a human being to connect with God, communicate with God. Right now we're in a situation where people, the world, humanity has not experienced prophecy for so many, so many years. Think about thousands of years the Jewish people have been in exile. We've returned to the land. <coughs> We've gone far, we're building the land, we're working so hard on building our land, but we still have not reached prophecy. 
we still have not reached return, the, the divine work of, of the tabernacle, of, of sacrifices, of, of the daily service in the temple has not been restored yet. These are very, very important elements of our, of our being, of the being of the people of Israel, which will be a lighthouse to the entire world to be able to bring and show that God is here on earth. And these are things lack today. Of course, it's a process, as we read about in the prophets, in, in, in Yechezkel Hanavi, and in, in, in how he talks about it, when the Jewish people shall return to the land, you know, and God will give them a heart of flesh. It's a process. First, the process begins by returning to the land, and then eventually, of course, we begin to begin, build the land, and eventually we will build our temple, and the, the divine service again will be restored to the holy temple site. This communication, this big boom of communication in the world today, in my opinion, comes from this vacuum that's in the world. People want to communicate with one another, just trying to connect with another. They want to connect with one another. A huge willing of connection because they're people feeling this connection to be able to communicate, to speak right out to God is missing in their lives. People are religious people. People are many wonderful people out there that believe in, in, in God and they try to um, serve God, but they still lack this way of communicating. And that's, of course, the beauty of prayer and, and tefillah. That today, prayer replaces you know, the temple service until we don't restore our temple, we have to, we pray. And praying has a tremendous power, of course, of a person reaching um, spiritual levels. But still, it is not the same thing as when the temple is restored and prophecy is restored. Think about the spiritual level we'll, we'll be on when that happens. And this is really the opening of the book of, of Leviticus, Vayikal Moshe, as it says over here, and God called out to Moshe Obeinu, Me'oel Mo'ed, from the, from the tabernacle saying, showing that, the communication to the prophet will happen when we have our tabernacle, when we have our temple. This will be a direct way of communication with Hashem, which, God willing, will happen very speedily soon nowadays. In order to understand again, and I mentioned, I opened up by saying I want to talk about um, some things I read about in the Rav Chaim HaKohen, the Chalban, and I just jumped off to give a little, uh, another, <coughs> another explanation of what, why there's cell phones in this world, cellular phones, all the communication thing. But it's connected. This, this inspiration I got for this um, idea, of course, came from, the, came from reading the Chaban's beautiful words. And I'd like to um, bring down what he says. He talks about, I'll try to summarize some of it. He talks about, he has some amazing concepts. He talks about that we all know that there are really five levels of the soul, which are called in Hebrew, nefesh, ruach, nishama, chayav, yechida. There are five levels of the soul, but he focuses on three particular levels, and which are nefesh, ruach, and nishama. The nefesh is the lowest level of the soul. It's the, the natural vital force that a person has flowing through his blood. That's called nefesh. Ruach is something which is the higher level. And nishama, of course, is, the, is, is, is even the higher level. There are three different levels that are the most known levels of the soul. There are the two, two very, very high levels. And the whole concept of understanding the nation of Israel, a lot of people, again, mentioned many times over what is the whole concept of the people of Israel being a chosen people to God, is understanding that the nation of Israel is supposed to work as a unit. As some people represent the nefesh, some people rep represent the ruach, some people represent the neshama, which means, if you look at the nation of Israel, we know that there's a division of three. One is called Israel, a regular Jew, who is not a Levite, from the Levite <coughs> side. He's considered a Israel, as we know, when we, uh, we're getting a call to the Torah on the Sabbath, you call to the Torah according to these different levels. But who's called first? The Kohen, right? The highest level is a Kohen. He's called first to the Torah. The second one is called to the Torah. It has to be a Levite. And then, then the Israelites are called. So this division of... of this division represents three out of the five parts of the soul, which I mentioned before. Nefesh, ruach nishama. Nefesh refers to the, again, to the regular Israel. Ruach refers to the Levites themselves. And nishama refers to the Kohen. But the fact is together, as one, as one unit, the nation of Israel works together as one unit, as building together like one koma, one complete unit, is built through the combination of of the three different forces working together. Everyone has their own function as they work together to, um, to build the nation of Israel. And therefore, the whole book, really, of, of Leviticus is, is really focused on the, 
the work of the Kohanim, the works of the priests, which are representing the Shema of Am Yisrael, the spirit of Am Yisrael, right? But they're not, we're not saying that they're above, again, they're not above the regular people of Israel. They have a special function. The function is they're representing, they're revealing the spiritual soul in the whole nation of Israel itself. That's the function to realize. Not we're saying the Kohanim are better than other, other Jews, right? But they have a different function. And that's what the whole, their whole concept is, to reveal, again, the concept of spirituality amongst the people of Israel. And that is why, that we said before, the temple is now, unfortunately, not rebuilt yet. And we're still lacking prophecy in Israel. So these great elements of Jewish society and, and culture and life are missing. They're lacking today, and we have to, of course, pray for the renewal and the, and the return, which will happen soon. And we will see, once Israel is on this level of revealing our soul level, Nishama, then, of course, we have the power of reaching out more to the nations of the world to show the light of the Torah. As we see it happening today, the nations of the world are definitely there's a great mass of, of non-Jews in the world today that are turning to Torah, interested in studying Torah. There's still a lot of confusion there. They haven't given up yet you know, um, things that they have to give up, their false beliefs and beliefs that they're really mis- making grave mistakes still, many of them, but others are really completely have given up their false beliefs and really looking for direction through the Jewish people to find God, to find spirituality in this world. And once the more the Jewish nation rectifies itself, this light will reach more and more and awaken more and more waves it will send amongst the nations of the world, because again, we have to be light to the nations of the world. And you see it happening. It's all it's, things are opening up in the world, and we just have to be ready for it. And as things open up, you see a lot more turmoil, because it always comes together. The challenge gets greater as you get higher, the fall could be much greater, and therefore the challenge is much greater to nowadays. This is one concept that the, the Chalban brought down. I'd like to mention another concept he brought down, it was very interesting, is the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus, refers to something called in Hebrew, we call ha dechura In Aramaic, it's a, it's a Kabbalistic term referring to um, the male side. What is the male side? The book explain that in a minute. And the book of Leviticus refers more to the female side. I'd like to explain what that means. Of course, it just, I'm trying to translate a Kabbalistic concept. We, we know a vessel, a vessel that we have in this world, any kind of vessel in this world, receives. A vessel has to receive abundance. And therefore, a combination of a man and a woman bring about a child, because a woman is a vessel to receive, again, the seed which brings forth a life, a life force. A combination of male and female will bring, bring life to this world. That's, it, does, it only works with male and female. That's the way God created the world, and of course we see it amongst, um, amongst the animal kingdom. That's how it works in this world, because God created a world of influence, of abundance, being brought down from a vessel, bring abundance brought, which is a light brought into a vessel, and it brings forth abundance in this world. The book of, of Shemot, Exodus, really refers to the light, the abundance, the light coming from above. It's from above to below, like Hashem wanting to influence. And we have to, of course, create the vessels. And the book of Leviticus refers to the, the work that we do below to receive God's light. And once we receive, we, or we are awoke, our spirit is, wakes up and we can actually give back. Once a person receives, he can return that to God. And that's a really in, a very, very important connection between these two books of of um, Shemot and, and Vayikra. And he goes on to say, the Chalban, if you look at the, the different vessels that were actually in the, t- in the tabernacle, sometimes a person can say a vessel is like a, an emtsa'i, as we say. It's, it's an intermediate, some kind of vessel that we needed to do something. But it doesn't have any intrinsic um, power of its own. Right? It's a vessel. But the answer is no. The vessels in the tabernacle himself or in the temple were very, very special vessels that they had a special influence. They had the power of influencing and waking up a certain part on the other side, the Nukba side in the book of Leviticus. And try to give an example that he brings down, for example. If you look at the table in the tabernacle or in the temple, the table represents the showbread. The showbread represents bounty, right? Food. So from that showbread that was on the table in the tabernacle, for us, we waken up to realize that we want to eat the kosher food, the proper food we're supposed to eat, the proper spiritual influence that we receive properly, we can actually give back by building a home of, of a kosher home, a happy home, a home of, of abundance, of wealth, 
This all comes from the table, the influence that the table brings down. If we look at the kiol, which was the actual vessel used for one to wash his hands, or the koanim to wash their hands in the temple, this awakens upon us. It brings out the, the will to cleanse ourselves, to clean ourselves from impurities and from uncleanliness. And that's the same thing. Another vessel in the temple itself that has this important function. And this way continues the Chabad to explain that every different part of the tabernacle really was able to influence in a certain way um, the people of Israel, which from here they built to rectify themselves and reach a very high spiritual light, which is brought about through the service that we do in the tabernacle itself to the Kohanim and the whole nation of Israel working together as one unit, which eventually, of course, will reach out and influence the entire world, as we said before. Well, I hope this concept um, um, reached your hearts. I think it's an important thing we have to work on, to really try to cleanse ourselves and learn from everything in the Torah. It is so, so beautiful and so special. I want to wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Shabbat, and um, it should be a very blessed um, a blessed week for all of us, and it's a very special time as Pesach comes around. And I want to give a special thanks to all our wonderful dear friends of Itamar that are standing behind our community at such a crucial time. It is so important to help, to reach a helping hand out to the people of Itamar here as we build our land. And we go on in really trying to bring about a big change in, for the better of humanity and for, the, for Am Yisrael. As we see, we're approaching redemption. We have to realize it's going to happen. We'll see prophets walking, the, walking this earth very soon and lights will begin to shine again. We all really are waiting anxiously for that to happen. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye.